everyone for your patience. Today we are looking at initial equations. This is our third video on our series. Um, we've been learning about laws of indices. So um, the replay of those videos are on my YouTube channel, Abanimas Academy on YouTube. So this is the final uh, lecture video on this particular topic. So we've looked at the various laws of indices, but today we want to apply these laws in solving equations, okay? So initial equations, simply these are equations that can be solved by applying one or more laws of indices. So initial equations are equations that can be solved by applying one or more laws of indices. That can be solved by applying one or more laws of indices. Okay. Whenever you want to solve an equation that has um, a link to indices. There are certain processes that is required to solve those equations, okay? Remember, solving an equation simply means finding the value of the variable, okay? So there are two basic situations that occur when you are trying to solve initial equations, okay? The first situation that occurs is when the variable is the exponent. Remember, an index number has two components. An index number has two components it has the base and the exponent or the power. So if we have two to the power of three, this is an index number. So it contains two components. This is the power and this is the base, okay? So there are two situations that occur when you are solving initial equations. The first, equation, the first situation is when the variable, which is the alphabet, is the power and also when the variable which is the alphabet is the base so for example if you have a situation like this 7 to the power of x is equal to 49 if you are told to find the value of x in this situation if you look at this situation the variable is a power the variable is a power this is different from when you have something like this x to the power of half is equal to 6. So in this case, the variable is a power, but in this other case, the variable is a base. So the way you go about solving these two situations is a little bit different. So what we are going to do in this class is to see how we can solve initial equations when the variable is an exponent, and also how we can solve an initial equation when the variable is a base. So that is the scope of today's lesson, okay? So let's continue. So we'll start with the first situation when the variable is an exponent. Then we'll look at the second situation where the variable is a base. Remember, an initial equation is an equation that can be solved by applying one or more laws of indices. So if you've not gone through the laws of indices that we did in our previous two classes, you can go to my YouTube channel and check for those two videos from the large class. Okay? So let's look at some examples. So the first situation is when the variable is an exponent. Okay. The first situation. When the variable is an exponent. Okay, example, when you have 7 to the power of x is equal to 49. So this is an example, 7 to the power of x is equal to 49. So when, when the variable is an exponent, what we are going to do is we we'll try to make sure that the basis become the same. We we'll try to make sure that the basis are the same. 
And the law that helps us to do this is when the basis of two sides of the equation are the same, then you can equate the exponent, okay? So when the basis on either sides of the equation are the same, then you can equate the powers. Powers, exponents, the same thing. So if you have a situation where the variable is an exponent or a power, then you've tried to make sure that the basis are the same so that when once the basis on both sides of the equation are the same, you can simply equate the powers. So now let's go back to this question here. Let's go back to this question here. So we have seven to the power of X. We are starting with something very, very easy, okay? Seven to the power of X is equal to 49. Now, is there a way of making these two bases the same? Is there a way of making these two bases the same? Yes, there is. If you want to write 49 in index form, you are going to look for a number that will multiply itself to give you 49. And that number is seven because seven multiplied by seven is going to give you 49. So instead of having 49 here, you can simply have seven to the power of X is equal to seven to the power of two. So here, seven is to the power of two because seven is multiplying itself two times to give you 49. So at this point, we can now apply this statement. When the basis on either sides of the equation are the same, then you can equate the powers. So here the base is seven, here the base is seven, therefore you can equate the powers. So here the power is x, here the power is two, the bases are the same, therefore x is equal to two. And that becomes the answer. So remember we are starting with something very easy, yeah? Yeah, so Favor, are you done? Because we want to look at, we want to step up a little, we want to step up a little by solving another question. I think we can continue. Okay. So remember, we are looking at a situation where the variable is an exponent, where the variable is an exponent. That's the situation we are looking at now. The second situation is when the variable is a base. So let's look at another example. Ten to the power of minus x is equal to one all over one thousand. One all over one thousand. So, does anybody have an idea uh, which of the laws of indices can help us work on this right side of this equation? Which of the laws? Um, Leah is asking, grade what? Um, I might not know how your, your country has its grades. So different countries have different uh, curriculum for different grades. So I might not know what obtained, what's obtained in your country. Niger boy black. Uncle wiped it out for me. I don't understand that. About, I, I, probably you are talking about the the previous question that was on the board. I left it for a while. Okay, apply reciprocal, okay, okay, okay. One of the laws of indices says that when you have a to the power of minus one, this is the same thing as one all over a. Sorry, this marker. Let me write it. If you have, for example, a to the power of minus c, let me use c. This is the same thing as, let me change this marker. Please. a to the power of minus b, okay. This is the same thing as one all over a to the power of b, okay. So a to the power of minus b is the same thing as one all over a to the power of b. So now, looking at here, we have one all over 1,000, right? 
we can decide to convert it to this form of index number. We can decide to convert this to an index number. So this looks like this. So we can convert it to this. Remember, 1,000 is the same thing as 10 to the power of 3. Because 10 times 10 times 10 is going to give you 1,000. So instead of having 1,000 here, we can simply have 10 to the power of 3. So this will be 10 to the power of minus x is equal to 1 all over 10 to the power of 3. So now this looks like what we had earlier. Remember, we had a to the power of minus b is equal to 1 all over a to the power of b. So this looks exactly like this. So instead of having this, we can have it in this form. So instead of having 1 all over 10 to the power of 3, we can have 10 to the power of minus 3. So that's what we do. So 10 to the power of minus x is equal to 10 to the power of minus 3. Do we all agree? Yeah, negative index, correct. Negative index. Welcome, welcome. Um, welcome. Nice to know that you're watching from Liberia. Um, before this class, we've done two, pre two other um, lecture series on this same topic. So, but you can go watch it on my YouTube channel. So we looked at the different laws of indices. So now we are building on that by using these laws of indices to solve initial equations. Initial equations are equations that can be solved using one or more laws of indices. So now we can apply what we have said before. When the bases are the same, we can equate the exponents. So we can say minus x is equal to minus 3 minus x is equal to minus 3. But we are not looking for minus 3. We are, we are not looking for minus x. We are looking for x. So since minus is common on both sides, we can just cancel it out. So we have x is equal to 3. x is equal to 3. So this is another simple question. Correct. Equate the powers. Not thinking. Equate the powers. OK. So when the variable is an exponent. So this is the situation we are working with, when the variable is an exponent. Can we continue? Can we continue? I think we can. Okay, what if we have different signs? Let's say, good, that's a good question. Let's say we have minus x is equal to 3. Minus x is equal to 3. So that means here is um, plus 3. So there are different signs. So we know that for us to have minus x, this is the same thing as minus 1x is equal to 3. This is the same thing as minus 1x is equal to 3. So we can divide both sides by minus 1. So minus 1, we cancel out minus 1. We have x. But over here, there is an invisible plus sign here. And we know that plus divided by minus is going to give us minus. And 3 divided by 1 is going to give us 3. So if it were to be in this situation, then the answer would have been minus 3. OK? So that's the difference. OK? So I believe at this point, everyone must have written this example. Let's look at another one. Two multiplied by four to the power of a minus three is equal to 16a divided by eight to the power of one minus a. Okay, so this looks a little bit more complex, but it is actually simple. If we are patient, somebody saying network, is the network bad? Is the network bad for everybody or just for that person? So this looks a little bit complicated, but 
it is actually very simple. If you observe here, the base is two, here the base is four, here the base is 16, here the base is eight. So all the bases are different. But what we can do in this situation is try to convert all the bases to be the same. And since two is the smallest base, let's see if we can convert four to base two. Four is the same thing as two times two. So that means four is the same thing as two to the power of two. What about 16? 16 is the same thing as two multiplied by two, multiplied by two, multiplied by two. When two multiplies itself four times, you are going to get 16. That means 16 is the same thing as two to the power of four. Eight is two multiplying itself three times. So eight is equal to two to the power of three. So instead of having four here, we can convert it to two to the power of two. Instead of having six, 16 here, we can convert it to two to the power of four. Instead of having eight here, we can convert it to two to the power of three. Hope that is correct. Make all bases the same. So let's do that. So this will be two. What's the exponent of this two? Does anybody know? Does this two have an exponent? And if it does, what is the exponent? Does this two have an exponent? And if it does, what is the exponent? One, correct. So whenever you don't see the exponent, the exponent there is one, correct. We have one times, instead of having two here, we're going to have two to the power of two. But that this two is going to multiply what was already here, a minus three. It's equal to 16 is two to the power of four. So we have two to the power of four a divided by two to the power of three into one minus a. Okay. Next, let's, let's try to eliminate this parenthesis over here. So we're going to have two to the power of one times two to the power of two a minus six is equal to two to the power of four a divided by two to the power of three multiplied by one gives you three. Three multiplied by minus a gives you minus three a. So we have eliminated the parentheses. So the next thing we can do now is apply the law of the addition law that we have learned earlier and then the subtraction law that we have also learned earlier. Addition law says that when you are multiplying two index numbers with the same base, you add the exponent. Subtraction law says that when you are dividing two index numbers with the same base, you subtract the second exponent from the first exponent. So this will be while maintaining just one base. So this will be two. I'm going to divide this at this point. Two to the power of one minus two a minus, minus six. Does it make sense? So what we have here, we have reduced it to this point. Does it make sense to everybody? Oh, thank you. It's plus because of multiplication. That's, that's why I have this, this phone over here so I can see in case I make a mistake along the way. Thank you, guys. Thank you. So plus, so we have equal to 2 into 4a minus 3 minus 3a. Okay. Hope I, I did not make any mistake again. Okay, so next, let's eliminate this bracket here. So plus times plus will give you plus. So we have two, we have one plus two a. Plus times minus will give you minus. So we have minus six. It's equal to two, four a. Minus times plus will give you minus. So we have minus three. Sorry, minus times plus will give you minus, yeah? And then minus times minus will give you plus. So we have plus three a. So now we can add like terms or subtract like terms. So one minus one minus six is gonna give us minus five. So we have two to the power of two a minus five is equal to 
2 to the power of, here we have 4a plus 3a, that will give us 7a. So we have 2 to the power of 7a minus 3. Yeah, my assistant teachers, can you check if I'm correct? Check if your boy is correct. Or did I make any mistake along the way? I think we are good. Okay. So at this point, now we can apply what we already know. When the basis on both sides of the equation are the same, you equate the exponent. So this would be 2a minus 5 is equal to 7a minus 3. You guys are so focused on the class. Nobody is tapping on the screen. How will others join? Correct. We drop the base, we equate the exponent. Yeah, that's what we did. So we move similar terms to one side of the equation. So we have 2a minus 7a is equal to minus 3 plus 5. 2a minus 7a is going to give us minus 5a is equal to minus 3 plus 5 is going to give us 2. Okay. We've run, we've run out of space. So I'm going to wipe this off. Now someone is saying no. What are you saying no to? Lee, um, how far back do you want me to go? To the beginning? Thank you so much for the like. like. Thank you for the comments. Thank you for the gift. I appreciate. Okay, um, let's just let just let just uh, let just start from here. Let's just breeze through everything. So we have two x, two times four to the power of a minus three is equal to that. So first of all, we bring out the exponent of two. The exponent of two is one, invisible one. It was invisible initially, but we brought it out. Next. We converted all the bases to base two. So now we have two here, but two is the same as two to the four is the same as two to the power of two. Sixteen is the same as two to the power of four. Eight is the same as two to the power of three. So next we eliminate this parenthesis. Two times two times a gave us two a. Two times minus three gave us minus six. And then over here we have two to the power of four minus a. Four a sorry two to the power of four a divided by we eliminated this parenthesis here, so we have 3 minus 3a. Okay, next, over here, we apply the addition law, which says that when the bases are the same, you equate the exponent. Sorry, when the bases are the same, you add the exponent. So that's what we did here. We did 1 plus everything here. And over here, when the bases are the same, when you are dividing, you subtract this one from this one. So that's what we did here, okay? And then when you eliminate this bracket, you have one plus two a minus six. Over here, you have four a minus three plus three a. Minus times minus give us this plus, okay? Minus times minus give us this plus. And then here we have, we bring all this together, two to the power of two a, 1 minus one minus 6 gave us minus 5. 2 to the power of 4 plus 4a plus 3a gave us 7a minus 3. And then we, we continue from there. If you want to understand it better, you just uh, go to my YouTube channel. We've learned two, two or we've had two other classes before this particular class where we looked at the laws of indices. So here we are just applying the laws of indices in solving. Uh, equations. So those videos are on my YouTube channel. My YouTube channel has the same name as my TikTok platform. Okay, so let's conclude with this. So we have minus 5a is equal to 2. That's what we have. So if we divide both sides by minus 5, a, this will cancel out this, a will be equal to there's an invisible plus sign here, so plus divided by minus gives us minus 2 all over. 
right. and that becomes the value of a. Yeah, someone said it's hanging. Is it hanging for everybody, or just favor? Oh, from my end, it's not hanging. The, the network has been very good from my end. I don't know how it is from other people's end. So what we've done is. Check the second, minus 3a, minus 3a, minus 3, how come? Here it won't be minus 3a, because, let me see, let me put it. It will be, if it is, if we are talking about here, it's not going to be minus 3a, because minus times, there's a plus sign here, so minus times plus is going to give you minus, but minus times minus is going to give you plus. When you are multiplying two numbers with the same sign, the answer will be positive. Okay, so let's continue. Let's go to the second situation. So the situation we have been looking at is when the variable is an exponent. So what we've been working on is when the variable is an exponent. So now we want to see a situation where the variable is a base, okay? We want to see a situation where the variable is a base. Mm. But before we do that, we are, let's let's let try, you guys should try out this question. If if you can't solve it, then we will do it together. I just remember that I had this on my list of. I will give you guys uh, two minutes, no five minutes to attempt it. I'll give you guys five minutes to attempt it. Two. Okay, I think the time is up. Yeah, so let's look at it. Let's look at this question together. So the question is quite easy, though it looks complicated. I will try to split the board into two. So first of all, let's work on this point here. Let's see what will come out if we if we work on this. So this this parenthesis means that everything in this parenthesis has a power of six. So this means five has a power of six. And two as a denominator has a power of six. So we can rewrite this as 25 to the power of x minus one is equal to 64. Parenthesis five to the power of six all over two to the power of six. Okay. So you can decide to change this. Five to the power of six is going to be a very large number. So let's not bother about that. But let's look at two to the power of six. And let's look at six, let's look at 64. Can 64 be converted to a power of 2? Can 64 be converted to a power of 2? Does anybody have an idea? Can 64 be converted to a power be converted to a power? How many times will 2 multiply itself to give you 64? How many times will 2 multiply itself to give you 64? Thanks for the gift. How many times will 2 multiply itself to give you 64? Six times. So that means 64 is the same thing as 2 to the power of 6. Yeah, someone said 4 times. 2 times 2 gives you 4, times 2, 8, times 2, 16, times 2, 32, and times 2, 64. So it's 6 times, right? Okay. So instead of having 64, we can have 2 to the power of 6. So this will be... Parenthesis means multiplication, so we can simply write times 5 to the power of 6 all over 2 to the power of 6. So at this point, these two can cancel each other out. Since they are the same, here is 2 to the power of 6, here is 2 to the power of 6, so they can cancel each other out. So now we are going to have 25 x minus 1 is equal to 5 to the power of 6. But we can convert 25 to a base of 5, because 25 is 5 times 5, which is correct, correct? 
Well done. The answer is four. Okay, good. Good. So 25 is the same thing as five to the power of two. So two into x minus one is equal to five. Five to the power of six. So now we see that the bases are the same, right? So since the bases are the same, we can simply equate the exponent. So this means two, two times x gives us two x, two times minus one gives us minus two is equal to six. So when you move minus two to the right, it's gonna become a plus. So we have two x is equal to six plus two. Two x is equal to eight. So dividing both sides by two, we have two x all over two is equal to eight all over two. The equation does not hold true. Really? Have you tried it with your calculator? So x is equal to four. Yeah, someone said the equation does not hold true. So if x is equal to four, if you put four back here, let's see, let's see. The answer is x is equal to four. So let's confirm if the equation, if the solution holds true in this equation. So if you put four here, you have four minus three. Four, so this will be 25 to the power of three, correct? Because four minus three, four minus one is gonna give you three. So we have 25 to the power of three. So let's see if what he said is true. Let me use this other form. Since my calculator is not here. So five to the power of six divided by two to the power of six. But before we do that, it, it, it's, thank you so much, thank you so much. So before we do that, let's, uh, this is five to the power of, Six all over two to the power of six. But remember, this two to the power of six is already canceling out here. So let's see if twenty-five to the power of three is equal to five to the power of six, because these two will cancel each other out, just as they did over here. So if you do twenty-five to the power of three, is it going to give you five to the power of six? I think it will. So I think they, they are the same. Hmm. Twenty-five to the power of three is twenty-five multiplying itself three times. Five to the power of six is five multiplying itself six times. If you do that, you are going to get the same answer. Let me use the calculator. So twenty-five times twenty-five times twenty-five gives you fifteen thousand. 625, 15,625. So if you multiply five by itself six times, is it going to give you 15,625? Yes, it will. So five times, let's do it manually. Five times five times five times five. That's five, that's five. So from my end, let me see if it can. Yeah, so it will give you that. So it's the same. So here will give you the same as this other side. So that means it's the same, okay? So it's good that we, we confirm that our answer is correct. Okay, so now we can look at the next situation where the variable is a base. So that's the next thing we have to do. Where the variable is a base. Hope I can wipe this off. Hope I can. Okay, good. You can join my WhatsApp group um, because it's in the WhatsApp group we determine the topic that we are going to learn. So every Mondays we have a voting. Uh, we, we vote for the topic that we're going to learn for that week. So the topic with the highest vote um, is the one that we're going to learn for that week. 
So, but if the topic has been taught already, then even if the topic is the one with the highest vote, we just refer those that are interested in the topic to the YouTube channel where I save all the, the live classes. So all the live classes are saved on my YouTube channel. The previous classes that we had on indices before this one are saved on the live on the YouTube channel. So you can just go to my YouTube channel. Yeah, I, can, I can't type my WhatsApp number here, but if you send me a DM, at the end of the, the live, if you send me a DM, I will respond to that. By, I, will, I will give you my, my WhatsApp number, but I can't type it over here. Okay. So let's continue. So we are looking at a situation where the variable is a base. So whenever the variable is a base, all we need to do is try to make sure that the exponent of the variable is equal to one. When the variable is a base, all we need to do is make the exponent of that variable equal to one. So whenever the, the variable is a base, all you need to do is make the exponent of the variable equal to one. Yeah, that's what we are going to do next. So example, if you have uh, x to the power of one over two is equal to six. X to the power of one over two is equal to six. So here the exponent is, the base is a variable. Previously, we are looking at the variable as an exponent, but now here the variable is a base. So from what we have on the board is, we're trying to make this exponent to become one. So initially the exponent is one all over two. One all over two. Times each side by the power that makes, yeah, so what's the, what, what, what to make one over two equal to one? Correct, that's, you're correct. But what to make one over two equal to one. What to make one over two equal to one? Two, correct. Two, correct. So since the the exponent is one over two, we just multiply it by the inverse. So this is one over two. You turn it upside down. So instead of one over two, you now have two over one. And we know that two over one is the same thing as two. So two over one, so that two will cancel out two, and then to become one. So we multiply both sides by the inverse, okay, correct. So this will be x to the power of one over two times two over one is equal to six to the power of two all over one. This one here is not important, but it can become important when, instead of having one over two, let's say we have two over three then this situation, we need to work on that. Okay, so over here, two is going to cancel out two. One times one divided by one times one is going to give you one. So the, we're going to have x to the power of one is equal to 
So when you have a fraction like this, when the exponent is a fraction, from what we have learned from law of fractional exponent, this is a power and this is a root. So that means we have 6 to the power of 2 and there is no square root here. So 6 to the power of 2 is going to give us 32. So, so we have 6 to the power of 2. X to the power of 1 is the same thing as X and 6 to the power of 2 is 32 because 6 times 6 will give you 32. Sorry, 36. 6 times 6, 36. Correct. I think, I think I'm getting hungry. Okay, so can we go to the next example? Can we go to the next example? Okay, good. So I'm going to wipe this off. So let's say we have um, a to the power of minus 2 is equal to 25. What's happening with this map? Sorry. A to the power of minus 2 is equal to 25. I don't know what's happening to this map. Okay, so a to the power of minus 2 is equal to 25. So for us to find the value of a, we need to make the exponent of a to be equal to 1. But the exponent of a is minus 2. So what are we going to introduce to make minus 2 to be equal to 1? Minus 1 over 2, correct. So we have a to the power of minus 2 times minus 1 over 2 is equal to 25 to the power of minus 1 over 2. Okay, so minus 2 is going to cancel out minus 2. We're going to have a is equal to, over here, we now have a negative exponent, so it's the same thing as 1 all over 25 to the power of 1 over 2. I will know that here, this is 25 to the power of 1 over 2. Um, 2 here represents root. So this will be a is equal to 1 all over square root of 25. A square root of 25 is equal to 5. So we have 1 all over 5. Good job, guys. Good job. Um, here, minus 2, minus 2. What to make minus 2 to become 1 is 1 over minus 2. Yeah, that's 0 0.2. What? 1 over 5 is 0 0.2. Yeah. You're welcome. You're welcome. So can we continue? So those of you that joined the class late, um, you can watch the replay of this live class on my YouTube channel, Agbani Mass Academy on YouTube. So you can just search it out. Also, you can just also sub subscribe to the YouTube channel. The link is on my bio. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel. Anytime we have a live class and you miss it, you can also watch the replay on YouTube. Okay, so let's look at another one. Or you guys can try this out. Try this, try this. careful while solving this be careful so you have um, four minutes to try this out four minutes you have four minutes to try this out so once it's 25 past 12 
No, no, no. You, 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 you solve it. When you are done solving it, I'm expecting an answer. That's what I'm expecting. I'm expecting an answer. Why you did that? Give me a minute. Okay, so while you're doing that, if you're a content creator and you, you want to learn how to grow your platform, especially for those that are uh, you're getting one all over. So, okay, thank God you know it's not possible. So um, right after this, this live session, I'll be back online to teach content creators or to teach uh, educational content creators how to grow their platform and monetize their platform. Okay. Many good, 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 good. Many educational content creators are doing a good job, but some are getting discouraged because they are not seeing the monetary benefit of what they are doing. Good, good. Okay, now uh, you still have um, two minutes more or a little bit less than two minutes. So I'll be teaching how to grow your, your, your TikTok platform. How to grow your TikTok platform. Okay, correct. Good job, guys. Good job, good job. Hmm, favor is having a negative, a negative, a negative. There's something wrong. I think you were close to the answer. Probably just the last step was the issue. But let's look at it. Let's see how it's done. Can we go ahead? Okay, so let's 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 confirm. So we have two x to the power of minus one all over two. So the way I solved it, yeah, I think someone was saying divide both sides by seven, by two, yeah? That would give you uh, a good answer. But I solved it a little, a, a, in a different way, but you can do that. So two x to the power of one all over two is equal to minus 14. So you can just divide both sides by two. So we have x to the power of minus one over two is equal to minus seven. Okay. So in order to make the exponent of x to become one, we are going to multiply both sides by what? What are we multiplying both sides by? Is this square or negative square? I think it's, you're going to multiply by negative, yeah. So you're going to be x to the power of minus one over two times minus two is equal to minus seven to the power of minus two, okay? So over here, these two will become one. So we have x to the power of one is equal to minus seven to the power of minus two. But minus here makes it to be an inverse, so x is the same thing as one all over minus seven to the power of two. And minus seven to the power of two is minus seven times minus seven. Minus, minus seven times minus seven. Minus times minus will give you a plus, and seven times seven will give you 49. So that means our answer is x is equal to one all over 49. Okay. Good job, good job, good job. Okay, I'm glad that we did well in this class. 
So I will just leave you guys with an assignment for today um, that you can work on. I will make the correction to those assignments on my YouTube channel by next week. So you can subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can see the correction. In case you, find, you found it difficult to solve, you can just check for the correction on my YouTube channel. Please go to my YouTube channel, subscribe, click on the notification bell so that you'll be, you'll be notified when I post a new content. Okay? Thank you. And also, I'll try to follow as many, as many people that we are active during the live session. I'll try to follow you guys on TikTok here. So let me write down the assignment and then we'll be done for today. Thank you so much for your participation. So uh, I'll be coming back live to teach maths on Wednesday by 8 p.m. Nigerian time. So the topic I'll be teaching by next week will be decided uh, in my WhatsApp group. So you can join the WhatsApp group. So you can uh, be, you can influence what we'll be learning. Let me drop something a little bit easy so some people can get some marks. Okay. Okay. Now, this one, I'll be very glad if you guys will get the answer. What's that on number three? What's that on the three? Okay, C minus one, C minus one. C minus one. Um, Right now in Nigeria, the time is 12.30. The time is 12.30. The time is 12.30. So you can compare that with your time, wherever you are. Okay, it's the same. So um, thank you guys for joining the live session. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also, um, if you have any friends or classmates that is struggling with maths, you can tell them to sub subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, there, if you go to the playlist of my YouTube channel, you're going to see different topics that you can just click on and learn. Okay, so I'm trying to build a very cheap library of maths topics where students, especially students in Africa, can just go to my YouTube channel, click on any topic, and learn it in detail. Okay. So that's why every of my live classes, um, I save it on my YouTube channel so that even those that are not uh, part of the live class can go to watch it at any time. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This class would have been boring without you guys. It wouldn't have made sense without you guys. You guys made it to make sense. I appreciate your time. Okay, so next time, until next time, guys, what's the name of, okay, I think I will just write it. It's the same as what I have on TikTok. So it's the same as what I have on TikTok. So see you guys on Wednesday, 8 p.m. Nigerian time. Have a wonderful evening.
Oh, afternoon over here. Morning in some places, evening in some places. See you in the next one. Adios.